Morning Trinity. So much. Our call to worship. Psalm number 98. 4 to 9. Psalm number 98. 4 to 9. Sing for joy to the Lord. O the earth. Praise him with songs and shouts of joy. Sing praises to the Lord. Play music on the harps. Blow trumpets and horns, and shout for joy to the Lord our, our King. Roar, sea, and every creature in you, sing, earth and all who live on you. Clap your hands, your rivers, you hills, sing together with joy before the Lord. Because he comes to rule the earth, he will rule the peoples of the world with justice and fairness. We open our service with hymn number 86 as printed on the hymn leaflet. Joy to the world.
Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive a king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven, heaven, nature sing. And heaven, nature sing. Savior reigns, let all their songs employ. While fields and flocks, what seals and plain, repeat that sounding joy, repeat that sounding joy, repeat, repeat that sounding joy, repeat that sound. of his love and wonders, wonders of his love and wonders of his love Hallelujah Thank you for the wonderful singing Shall we pray? Gracious and loving Father Almighty once again, we come before you, God, this morning, approaching thy throne of grace, hearts that are full of gratitude to God. We are thankful, Master, that in this day we are alive. We are thankful, Master, that you saw us through the night. We are thankful, Master, that you saw us through the past week. We are grateful and thankful, Lord, that you've seen us even to the last Sunday of this month. Glory and honor be given to you. To some, Lord, it was a month that was so difficult, and yet you helped them and they pulled. To others, O oh Lord, it's been a month full of joys, and your name shall forever be glorified. Thank you, Mwelesa Tuami Totela. You are holy, you are who you are. You never change, O oh God. You're the same yesterday day and forever you shall remain the only one whose promises are true whose promises are yes and amen god as we bless your name this morning yes this is the day that you've made for us to rejoice and be glad in our god we pray that god may you open heavens O lord and let your children in this place shout joy to the world and let their hearts be filled with praises Yes, Lord, it is you who inhabits our praises. And we invite you this morning, O oh Lord, that in everything that we shall do in this day, God, may all praise be given unto you in Jesus' mighty name. For we know the blessings that when praises are lifted high unto thee, God Almighty, your blessings and glory comes down. And so this is our prayer this morning. Father, even as we approach you, one thing we know for sure, God, is that we are incomplete people, that we are people who have fallen short of your glory, Master, and that above Father, every other time, we only seek that you alone refresh us, that you alone may wash us in the blood of Jesus, that you alone, oh God, may cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that you alone, above Father, may make us pure once again. So we approach thee, he who invites us in the book of Isaiah, that yes, I know, though your sins be as red as scarlet I invite you to come let us sit down and reason I shall wash them to be whiter than snow God this is our prayer this morning that as we approach thee God as we are in thy presence O oh Lord as we leave this place throughout the week O oh Lord may we be a people that is forgiven by the almighty God and Lord as you forgive us may we forgive one another in the name of Jesus Christ, receive the glory, O King of kings, receive the honor. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. Father, yes, what a wonderful day it is. You have held back the reins, O Lord, that your children may praise and worship you this morning. 
we choose one thing and one thing only to exalt thy holy name. So receive our praises. We are thankful for everything. Mighty name, Jesus. For the begin and end of Christ we Amen. Thank you. We may take our seat. Good morning, church. Today we begin our Advent season. Uh, the four Sundays leading on to the first Advent that we commemorate today represents expectation. Just as the children of Israel, when they were in exile, looked upon the wonders and signs that God performed before them, they are laid out of each we to this present day world in the suffering of this the world, look with expectation back to the time our Lord Jesus Christ was born, with sure hope that Christ will return a second time to consummate the kingdom. And therefore, the first advent represents expectation. We we'll have the first candle lit today, and I will invite our treasurer, Mr. Sinkala, to light the first advent candle, and we'll sing hymn number 68, verses 1 and 2. This is one and Thank you so much. I will now invite Vito Pico to come and uh, minister unto us. So all the songs, all the songs that Vito Pico will be ministering this morning are from the album which we are releasing. Please be blessed. Sing along. Uh, they are very simple songs and enjoy. Home. <laughs> Ishi wilhe nuri abelia maka 
kwe ba fiki lisha ifyo mwala ya Lichi ndi kwe ishi na liendu Mwansalile akale Yoshila wa munda mulimayo Ile lupo fiki lisha Timu manda ye
Kashifwe kuchini socho Waisa Kwa wapaka socho ube Shimwere nganya Waimwine chalo nesonde Waisa Kwa kwa kutasha Chakwa wa umbinga iwe Pokele la malu mweza wesu Pokele la malu mweza Kwa kutote la Tua kutota ya wepa pionse wachi Waisa Makutuita kama ya Hallelujah. Thank you. The next song is the church anthem. Uh, it says, let us build. We know the song, right? So we can dance along. So this song was born because of the project that we have as a church. <laughs> Who will build God's house? I will. Who will build God's house? I will. Who will build God's house? I will. Manga nyumba ya ambu ye yesu Ide Nani aza manga nyumba ya ambu ye yesu Ide Nani wala kule nganda ya kwa lesa kata Ide Nani wala kule nganda ya kwa lesa kata Thank you. 
Thank you. We will now invite the church secretary. and sisters who are joining us through Facebook in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today is our first Advent Sunday, and it marks uh, the beginning of Advent season when we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've already commemorated this beautiful and special day by lighting one candle. The next uh, three Sundays we we'll light three more candles, candles until we do the main one. Amen. This season also is used to remember the second coming of God. And that's what gives us hope. The Lord coming again. Amen. And preaching to us on this special day is our very own Reverend Emmanuel Kangwabwaria. And our Reverend is being assisted by Elder Patson Zimba, who is Elder of Section 6, and also Choir director for Vitumbiko Choir. And allow me to also welcome the Vitumbiko Choir. Please stand. Thank you. As you launch your second album, a beautiful day. Thanks for our reverend and the entire congregation for allowing us this special song. So to our reverend, our worship leader and the choir, welcome in the name of the, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, sir. If we have any visitors in our midst, please stand. Welcome you. Thank you very, very much. Amen. To you all, brothers and sisters, welcome to the Trinity Congregation, the Lusaka Central Congregation, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come at a time when the special day for I just pray that as you fellowship with us, you find warmth. That's the warmth of men. Just uh, some highlights from the brochure congregation. We've seen that uh, over the past and it's, our attendance has increased. We know that we resumed our meeting based on the authorization from our health authorities and our numbers. The authorized number is 200. But we are going beyond that number. And for that reason, uh, 
Pastor and Congregation Council that sat resolved that uh, we should have a separation, we should allocate sections to attend our two services. So in the brochure, I hope you all have a copy. You can see the sections that will be attending the first service beginning at uh, 07. 30 to 730. So the, the, those are the sections and the, the sections are located to the second service. And please also note that this will be changing every month. So bear with us. These are just efforts for the congregation to adhere to our guidelines, which are conditions for us to room our Sunday service. From marriage guidance, couples that are intending to get married in January, the first quarter of 2021, lessons have already started. Please, if you are among those that want to, are planning to get married from 1st January to 31st March, the lessons that have started are yours. So we implore you to see your section elder and commence what needs to be done for you to join the class. We can also just uh, remind ourselves of the various committee meetings that have commenced. We keep on urging all of us to adhere to the COVID guidelines. From vision of worship, an appeal for new members, please, don't sit on your talent, come forth, be a minister through music, the body of Christ. And this goes for the other choirs we have, Trinity Choir, even Vitumbiko Choir. Congregation, let us, among, let us just take note among the items we are looking ahead for is crofts over and thanksgiving service on the 31st December 2020. When the new year is starting, when that, the moment the new year sets in, everyone wants to be found praising. Amen. Not to be found. Be found in the house of God. Thanking God as the clock ticks into the new year. And we are having a crossover on that day. Please be part of it. Let's continue to encourage one another as we have this big project to build a new sanctuary here. Let's support, let's render the necessary support as God has blessed you. God bless you all and by the same. Thank you very much. Father, we pray that we love you. We declare our everlasting love for you. Father, Father, we declare that we love you. We declare our everlasting love for you, Jesus, Jesus, that we love you. We declare
Lord, what a glorious day this is. We acknowledge you, we acknowledge your presence. This is the day you've made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in it, O oh God. Lord, thank you for this wonderful weather, O oh God, that has necessitated this event, O oh Jehovah God. You are faithful, you are God alone. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So, Father, we acknowledge everything that you are to us, everything you have been. And Lord, even as we are praying in this place and lifting up all kinds of requests before you, we know that you hear us, O oh God. For your word has said, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I give unto you. So, Father, we pray that you give us this nation. We pray that this nation is for Jesus. We pray, Jehovah God, that lives shall be changed. Even as we near the soon coming, uh, the return of the king, we pray, Jehovah God, that, Lord, the gospel shall begin to be preached, O oh God, with boldness. The, bold, uh, the boldness of the Lord shall be upon each one of us in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray that, O oh God, the church will arise. We pray that, Lord, the eyes, the, the eyes of our spiritual understanding, that our spiritual ears shall be open, O oh God, to be sensitive to what you're doing in this hour in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we come against all hindering spirits, O oh God, that cause the church to fall into slumber, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. During times like this, O oh God, when there's so much talking, when there's so much division, even in the country, we pray and declare peace in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, your word says, where there's unity, God commands a blessing. So we pray in this place that Zambia, O oh God, shall arise and be the beacon of hope, O oh God, not just in this region, but to the world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Jehovah God, that you touch every leadership structure, almighty God, because leadership is from you. So, Father, as you've commanded us to pray, we lift up our leaders before you. We pray that you give them direction. We pray that, Jehovah God, you give them courage. We pray, that Jehovah God, that you silence all negative voices, almighty Father, that will begin, oh God, to distract, oh God, all those in authority in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, Jehovah God, that, Lord, the... the Whatever it is you've planned for this nation shall come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. In all the sectors, Jehovah God, where we are seeing challenges, Father, we pray, O oh God, that you shall intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, you look upon us with regards to the politics of this nation in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that you shall arise. Even, Jehovah God, even as we've declared that this nation is for Jesus, we pray and declare that, Lord, all division is removed in Jesus' name. We pray that the politics of this nation shall give glory to God, even as we've declared it as a Christian nation in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, O oh God, for our economics, O oh God, that, Lord, they'll begin to take shape in Jesus' name. We pray for every sector, the agriculture sector, Almighty oh God, that is so critical, O oh God, and is a heartbeat to this nation. We pray that, Father, Lord, you move, O oh God, and breathe upon this nation. We pray that, Lord, you touch even the area of uh, the mines and the, and the finances and all other sectors, O oh God, that are connected to the destiny of this nation. We pray that, Lord, you arise in Jesus' Jesus name let your enemies be scattered we pray in Jesus name we pray oh Lord for our church that the church of oh God shall begin oh Lord to take the direction that the Lord is giving it for 2021 in Jesus mighty name Lord you you have brought us thus far so we give you the praise and we thank you that thus far you've brought us and because thus far you you have brought us you take us even further oh God as we close this year oh father we pray with all the challenges that we've had this year things unprecedented, things that, Lord, we never expected, things that Jehovah God, oh God, can discourage one from following you. We pray that, Jehovah God, you strengthen the weak. Those who are mourning, you strengthen them, oh God, in Jesus' name. Those who are sick, you heal them, oh God. Those who are bound are delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to give you the praise. We want to give you the honor, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing even in this church, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for even this project that, that the Vitumbiko Choir, oh God, is, is, is launching, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing them thus far. We thank you that, Lord, you made them a blessing to us, oh God. We pray that, Lord, everything else that needs to be put together, oh God, until the final launch, oh Father, let all the blessings come upon them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare that, Jehovah God, this is just, this is not the end, but it's the beginning even of a new season for them. In Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, thank you for our reverend. Thank you for his family. We pray that you strengthen and bless them. In Jesus' name. May you continue to give 
the family, oh God, direction. Continue to give them guidance. Bless them with good health, oh God. Bless them in all areas in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the pastor of this church, the executive, the congregation council. Father, I pray that you breathe upon us. Let the life of God be upon us in Jesus' name. Let the life of God come upon every committee, every leader, every choir, every group at this church in Jesus' name. Touch the backslidden. Let them come back to God. Touch every youth at this church. Let them arise in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for those, Lord, who are looking for employment. Those, oh God, who may have qualifications but cannot seem to find a breakthrough. Let, oh God, this season be for them in Jesus' name. As they enter 2021, let doors be opened in Jesus' name. There are so many doors people are waiting for. In the area of careers, in the area of business, in ministries, in families, I pray that, Lord, you turn their situation around in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that you're with us. And wherever we go, oh God, just like you have said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So Father, we move with hope and faith that you're ever with us. As we continue, oh God, with this wonderful event, I pray that Lord, your hand shall continue to rest upon us. Spirit of God, continue to move in this place right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Everybody say, amen. Thank you so much uh, to the secretary and also to Brother Lukonga for the wonderful prayer. Uh, right about now, we will uplift our offerings and uh, so our offerings will be done right in here. Uh, what will happen is the stewards will go row by row uh, without passing the offering basket as we give our offerings. And as we do so, I'll invite Vitumbiko to do for us another set the next set involves, the first song is a rearranged hymn. Uh, the hymn is the great physician, Shinganga Adimupepi. So in this song, um, the first verse we did it in Silozi, and then the second verse is in Bemba. It features a brother Francis who couldn't travel, so we'll do a cover for him. Be blessed. So as we are pleased the offerings, if there's still be time for one more song, we're going to do a song called Umusumba Upia.
we pray? Our God and our Father, we thank you for this day and blessing us with this day. We thank you, God, for the many gifts that you've given us, oh God, gifts that money can't even buy, the gift of life, family, friends, our jobs, businesses, opportunities to be able to be in school, oh God. We thank you for these and so many other blessings. And therefore, God, we bring forth these offerings and tithes to you, that you may bless them and sanctify them, that they may be used to the extension of your kingdom here on earth. We pray, O oh God, that you may teach us to give and give with all our hearts without withholding anything. We bless you, O oh God. We glorify you. In the blessed might name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our first Bible reading is coming from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 10, verses 18 to 19. Then the dazzling light of the Lord's presence left the entrance of the temple and moved to a place above the creatures. They spread their wings and flew up from earth while I was watching, and the wheels went with them. They paused at the east gate of the temple and the dazzling light was over them. Ends the first reading. Our second reading comes from the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 1 to 14, and then we skip 23, 28. Brother? Jesus left and was going away from the temple when his disciples came to him to call his attention to its building. Yes, he said, you may well look at all these. I tell you this, not a single stone here will be left in its place. Every one of them will be thrown down. As Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him in private. Tell us when, when all this will be, they asked. And what will happen to show that it is the time for your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, be on your guard and do not let anyone deceive you. Many men claiming to speak for me will come and say, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many people. You are going to hear the noise of battles close by and the news of battles far away, but do not be troubled. Such things must happen but they do not mean that the end has come. Countries will fight each other. Kingdoms will attack one another. There will be famines and earthquakes everywhere. All these things are, the like, are like the first pains of childbirth. Then you will be arrested and handed over to, the, uh, to be punished and be put to death. All mankind will hate you because of me. Many will give up their faith at that time. They will betray one another and hate one another. Then many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Such will be the spread of evil that many people's love will grow cold. But whoever holds out to the end will be saved. And this good news about the kingdom will be preached through all the world for a witness to all mankind. And then the end will come. Then, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe him. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear. They will perform great miracles and wonders in order to save even God's chosen people, if possible. Listen, I have told you this before the time comes. Or if people should tell you, look, he is out in the desert, don't go there. Or if they say, look, he is hiding here, don't believe it. For the Son of Man will come like the lightning which flashes across the whole sky from the east to west. Here ends the word of God. Thanks to Mrs. Nosiku Mdenda for the wonderful 
offertory prayer. And thank you so much to Aunt Liz, Elizabeth Chirwa for the wonderful Bible reading. Just before we invite the minister, we're going to do one more song, which says, Lilumbwe Ishinadienu, let the name of the Lord be praised. And this also was written by Vitumbiko. Be blessed.
Five four three. His Son and the Holy Spirit, good morning. Let us pray to God. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility so that on the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation, today is the first Advent Sunday. The Church Universal observe this period of Advent in the commemoration of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ into the world. I want to remind you, congregation, that we have today started the race to Christmas. But is it a coincidence that our own Vitumbiko Choir have said this day as a day for the release of their album. Is it really a coincidence? To me, I don't think so. In my mind and my own understanding, Vitumbiko have just jumped on the wagon to be part of the prophets announcing the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have listened, congregation, to many songs and from many singers. By today, our own Vitumbiko Choir, they are saying, we have brought you the voice of salvation. We have brought you that song of peace. I know you are all familiar with these faces. And sometimes we may not even take them serious because we may be over familiar with them. But I come to urge you to open your ears and listen to their proclamation through their music. I want to assure you that when you pick word by word, you'll never be the same again. I was talking to Mr. Mpepo some few days ago. We were rewinding our thoughts and talking about one of our teachers at secondary school. And the storybooks that we used to read. One of the books contained the story of the lions and the elands and the rabbits. 
So this story went like this. The lions were always on top of the mountain. And the elands were down the mountain. Now, the calves used to go on top and play with the cubs. The mother Ellen used to tell the young Ellen to say, please be careful. The lions are very strong. If you're not careful, they will kill you and they will chew you. So one time as they were playing, the calf was killed. And then the mother lion said, now this will be our lunch. When they went away, they found that the rabbit had eaten the earrobes. So they came and said, is this the calf that you had left? Where are the earrobes? The rabbit said, no, this is the way this one was born. And the lion said, no, this one had the earrobes. The rabbit said, let me find out from the mother. So the rabbit shouted, you the mother to this calf. Does your child has ears? Then the mother said, no. If he had the ears, he would have been listened to what I've been telling him. Congregation, I come to share with you. Unfortunately, I was thinking in Bemba. I couldn't translate this in English. But uh, from Eastern, we say, Umoyo ni mkwatu. I don't know what others will say. In Bemba, we say, Umoyo wa muntu wa wa mkutwi. What about in laws? Help me. I was thinking in Bemba. For our understanding, this is the theme for today. Umoyo ni mkwatu. What is it in the laws? It, it, speak loud so that they... Kupilo wa mutu Wizi mwazene Umweo wa mutu Wa mkutwi The life of a man is in his ears. The passage in the Gospel according to St. Matthew describes how our Lord Jesus Christ knew the temple and how he knew the whole Jerusalem. Our Lord Jesus Christ understood the temple better than the disciples themselves. Our Lord Jesus Christ understood Jerusalem better than the disciples did. Hence, his warning to them, watch out that no one deceives you. Beware that no one leads you away. Our Lord Jesus Christ was more knowledgeable. In the minds of the disciples, our Lord Jesus Christ did not see well that temple. In the minds of the disciples, Jesus Christ did not pay attention to the temple. They wanted to attract his attention by showing him how beautiful the structure was. But our Lord Jesus Christ was concerned not about the beauty of the structure, but about what was happening in the temple and how the temple was abused. The temple was the center of sacrifice. 
But that sacrifice tend to be a source of enriching temple attendance and making it expensive to the common people. Worship was now centered on the temple itself and worship was not centered on God. Hallelujah. They said that their worship on the temple and not on God. And this shift is what Ezekiel saw in his vision in chapter 10. God's glory departed from the temple and never completely present until Christ himself visited it in the New Testament. This is what Ezekiel saw. The glory of God shifting slowly from the temple. The glory of God, they could worship, but there was no glory of God. But they were worshiping the temple and not God himself. So the glory shifted until Christ himself visited that temple in the New Testament times. God's holiness, he required that he leaves the temple because the people had defiled it. When worship centers on material things, the glory of God departs. Hallelujah. When worship centers on material things, the glory of God departs. When worship turns into business of profit, the glory of God departs. When worshippers come to church looking at what they have, when worshippers come to church looking at what they are putting on, when worshippers come to church looking at themselves to be better than others, the glory of God departs. When worship centers on making some of the people to be rich at the expense of others, hallelujah, when worship centers on making some people rich at the expense of others, the glory of God departs from that temple, departs from that church. The glory of God departs from such Christians. And this development, this way of worship, disturbed our Lord Jesus Christ. It made our Lord Jesus Christ to turn his back on the temple and on the practices of the temple. And therefore, it prompted our Lord Jesus Christ to prophesy its destruction that came to happen about 40 years after his death. The situation forced our Lord Jesus Christ to prophesy the destruction of the temple. And this came to pass. 40 years 
after his death, in about 70 AD. What our Lord Jesus Christ showed was simply the start of a new phase of mission in which the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ and the latter Christians and the church become the central focus of God's work in the world. Become the central focus of advancing God's mission. Fellow worshippers, this is the first Advent Sunday. From this passage, I come to remind you that temple leaders supposed to be messiahs. And every time the temple leaders preach to the end times, the temple leaders, they were even performing some signs to make others follow them. Fellow Christians, Today, we see people sometimes tend to worship the churches. They tend to worship the names of churches. They tend to worship the instruments in those churches at the expense of God. They will even tell you to say that church is good, is better. Just the way it is built. Have to go to that church because they have got instruments and not because there is God. We see today in this world some of our Christians who tend to worship names of church leaders at the expense of God. May God deliver you. Instead of worshipping God, people have begun worshipping the names of the church leaders. And they are so much attached to church leaders and not to God, as though the church leader is their God. Fellow believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to remind you, I want to warn you today, that many people in this world are forming churches not because they want to lead people to God. Watch out that no one misleads you. Not because they want to lead people to God, but they want to be rich. The many so-called men and women of God Today, in this era, they have turned the church for employment. They have turned the church into the source of employment. I was talking to our student minister to say, when you are in school, try to uh, associate with others and see there are very few people who leave their nets, who leave their fishing, who leave their employment and say, I want to save God. You find that most of the people today, after struggling to get employed, the last resort is to become the, the pastor.
The church today has become the first employer. We see these men and women of God, even some ordinary Christians, they always want to have the gifts of healing and the gifts of foretelling the future. They always want to have the gifts of foretelling your fortunes and misfortunes just to deceive others at the expense of salvation in fullness. Hallelujah. Today, Christians, some of them are moving from one church to the other, from the west to the east, not because they want God, but because they have a problem themselves. In this time of economic and political uncertainties, Christians have lost grip to their faith. Christians are being easily blown by the wind. Christians are being told here is the spirit, here is the true church, here is your prophets. Christians are being told tomorrow there will be a miracle service. Come and receive your miracles. As though the people announcing have got a bag of miracles. You have heard of those announcing today I don't want to perform miracles. Come and meet next week. I promise you you shall receive your miracles. As though that preacher is always moving with a bag of miracles. Today, we see the church leaders. We see some of the preachers and some of the pastors. They even give examples of quakes, floods, and other things as signs of the end. Remember, Jesus Christ is reminding us that this is just the beginning of the birth pains. When they're talking about the end, this is what God talked about, that the end is like this. So when you see this and this, is the end of the world. They are forgetting that such plagues were there even before they were born. I remember Mr. Zimba one time preaching on the Wednesday service, talking about somebody who sold everything because the preacher said, the end is coming. And he ended up selling even the house. And when that day arrived, the end did not come. That man was stranded. He is now very poor. How can he, he talk about the quakes? Talks about the plagues. Talks about the floods. And says this is the, went, the end of the world. The floods were there. Even at the time of Noah. The world never ended. The plagues were there. Even in Egypt. When the Israelites were there. The world never ended. Let no one deceive you. 
Let no one deceive you. Even here, there are some believers, there are some Christians here who move from one church to the other looking for Jesus. Today they are here. In the afternoon they are somewhere else. In the night they are somewhere else. They are here. They are always looking for wonders. How can you go out there looking for wonders, looking for miracles, and yet yourself you are not a miracle? Yourself you are not a wonder. Don't you realize that Jesus is God himself? That it is written in the Bible that you are wonderfully fed. You are a wonder yourself. The first wonder is yourself. I am wonderfully made. What else do I look for? The first miracle of God is myself. The first wonder I can look for is myself. You cannot be looking for wonders somewhere else when you are thought to admit that you are a wonder yourself. You cannot go out there looking for miracles when you can't see yourself to be a miracle. Can't you see the greatness of God within yourself? Can't you see how great God is just within yourself? Don't you see something miraculous about yourself? How do you go out looking for healing here and there when yourself you can't first heal your conscience? How do you feel to speak to your conscience? How can healing come when your conscience cannot be healed? Hallelujah. You go out there to say, lay my hands on me, lay my hands on me. So that I can have marriage. When yourself, you cannot behave like a married material. But you go out there. Why can't you first start by behaving like a married material? So that the time you come and say, everyone, lay my hand on me, the miracles will be flowing. Hallelujah. Let no one deceive you. Let no one mislead you by saying, he is there. He is out there. Start seeing yourself as the wonder of God. As the miracle of God. If you want marriage, behave like a married material. You can't go for someone to pray for you. And yet, your character is different. Congregation, I'm not saying you can't be invited to worship by others. No. I'm not saying you can't pray with other Christ centered believers for your spiritual nourishment. No. I come to encourage you. I'm not saying Jesus is on the new season. But I came to encourage you to understand. That there is God in the Trinity. I came to encourage you to understand that is there is power of God in the Trinity.
I'm saying, watch out that no one deceives you. Some Christians have no start. They are blown by wind of this world. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Beware that no one deceives you. Not all churches are formed because the founders love God. Not that all leaders of churches love their people. Some churches are coming up because of poverty. Some church leaders want to enrich themselves. That's why today the common gospel is the gospel of prosperity and not the gospel of salvation. The preachers always want to promise their people that before you reach your home, you find the other door in your fridge. Before you reach your home, you find somebody selling tomato nearby. That was meant for you. Beware that no one deceives you. People today, you cannot differentiate. I always say it is difficult now to differentiate between a prophet and a witch doctor. And now today, I've even given them a, 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 a similar name. Some are prophets, some are prophetas. Don't know what is the difference. And they so called the papa, 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 papa. Beware that no one deceives you. Today we have seen where people are asked before you receive your salvation, go and see. Put the money here. People are taking the fridges. Somebody came to confess to me one time, not here, but that other side. Because the woman, two seasons. The man belongs to this church with uh, other names and in international or something. And this man, unfortunately, the woman was complaining. The man went his Friday, Thursday. When he knocks off, I don't know where in town, he has to go straight to church. He has to sleep in the church. In the morning, he goes back to work. So the whole weekend, he has to be sleeping in the church, and they say they were praying until after Sunday. So on Monday, that is when the, the man will go and sleep in his home. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we go back to sleep in church. And this man had finished picking the property from home, taking to church. So now the, 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 the pastor, the papa, probably said, prophesied to say, uh, he has seen a brighter future and things are coming our way. So oh, don't worry. So this woman was saying, Reverend, I visited them. I said, you see, not even plates. Because just two days before, he took a dinner set, went with it to church. What I'm trying to say is, let no one deceive you. There is no one who went to Jesus 
and he paid for salvation. There is no one who went to Jesus and Jesus said, for me to pray for you, for me to heal you, you have to bring, to bring the fridge. There is no one who went to Jesus and Jesus said, for you to receive your salvation, for you to be healed, bring so much. But today, we have seen the papa. First, sow the seed. If you don't sow the seed, you not receive the healing. Where did Jesus? Which God? If the God is God of compassion, the God of love, the God of mercy, who looks at us in all our affliction, if Jesus is the one who said, come to me, all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest, how can I demand for a seed, putting the burden on the already burdened? Watch that no one leaves you. People, it's very common, paying for their salvation. I'm not saying you cannot thank God. But there is no way it can be taught for you to receive what you want. Just bring something. It happened in Indora. One preacher came from South Africa. I believe that some of you have even gone there. Oh. Now he came to Indora. So to see him, those who need to have contact with him. The ushers were saying you have to bring the envelope to give to the papa. So, if you put in a hundred kwacha, you just see the ushers. Oh, but is Mrs. Wada there? I think she can bear me witness. She's there. They were told to pay. Bring the envelope. To their surprise, only those who were putting a thousand and up. That is the God for them. Not for us, the common people. Is not the God who sent Jesus Christ to the lost sheep of Israel. These names, the instruments, the structures of the churches, they will not give you life. I came to remind on this first advent. That life of a man is in his age. Umoyo, Ukwatu. God bless you.